Hmm. Okay, this is gonna be a little... Okay, anyway, we're back. So we have... We have, again, like I said, Ad Kingstead versus Scipio on Adansonia. And, yeah, that's what we're talking about. It is a very large map. Sorry, this is one thing. I was thinking of Lonely Oasis. Adansonia is a map that you can use vehicles on. But we do often see Amphib. We often you see sometimes exactly. ships, even. No, no, I haven't seen ships on this one. What I have seen is hovers, and I've seen lots of mm -hmm. bots. You have with so many maxes. It's all about expanding and raiding the expansion. If you see, like, so many safe places to expand and so many unsafe places to expand. That makes sense. I mean, I was thinking an earlier version of Adam Sony was definitely more effective for ships, but this one, yeah, there's less room. However, we see both players are indeed going for bots. Cloaky versus Shield. Classic matchup. Mm -hmm. Well, Sipia goes for the for starting with Constructor, and Kingstad starts with a Bandit. No, what? it's followed by a Constructor as well. Yeah, so it looks like Kingstad is going for pretty typical... I mean, both of them kind of going for the typical scout setup. Although, it looks like Scipio a bit more concerned about keeping their expansion safe rather than raiding out their opponents. Mm, yes, currently seems so. And does that seem like... Uh, that seems odd to me. Like, generally in 1v1, we see that, but I think CPO... I'm guessing CPO is a bit more of a team game player, because that, I'm... I would imagine yes. comes up more often in that context. Right. Um, but you can see that also Kingstad guards his uh, constructor, and everyone here is a bit on the conservative side. No one has started naked expanding or anything. Um, Kingstad is a bit more brave with not putting any defenses in his base. Hmm. Yeah, that's a fair point. Kingstead is definitely... Kingstead's definitely relying a lot more on those bandits to make sure that they have something to keep themselves up with the radar and the... Actually, two radars. They're very... They're very concerned about this stuff, and they are right to be. Shippy already coming in with a couple of glaives, possibly getting a small raid in, but two glaives... Mm -hmm. Even with a two-pronged attack, I'm not sure how this is... This does not seem like something's going to deal a whole lot of damage. Yeah, probably not. In the north, uh, a lone bandit by Kingstad ran straight into a Lotus, which was finished just a second earlier. Well, that happens sometimes. They are definitely not going to be able to take on a Lotus all on their own, but that also goes right. for CPU's Glaze right now. I mean... Right. Going in, seeing the Lotus. Getting rid of the Radar Tower is not a bad idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And at this point, the entire southeast side is pretty much open for Kingstad to look at, whereas CPO... I mean, they're getting a lot of scouting with the Glaives as well. Actually, I'd say right now, CPO is at quite the advantage information-wise. Uh, yeah, this is possible. Like, I haven't seen... Um, yeah, I haven't seen Kingstad sending anything deep, which actually saw anything. Yeah, so far as I'm concerned, Kingstad is a little bit behind now, but CPO... Oh, man, she has the energy as well. They have information. They have parity on metal. I mean, the one thing I'd say Kingstad does have is the fact that bandits are tougher than glaives, but that's that's not going to matter too much in a 6v2 fight. Yeah, I know. Not really. Um, glaives also have a bigger DPS, so it's just a matter of micro in like 8 times out of 10. Well, yeah, and at this point, we aren't seeing even that, because this with CPO wanted to go for the Warriors instead, wanted to get that Riot Force out, not even wanting to try to play the micro game. I mean, they might have to, but it's clear that CPO is just... They're trying to find the good engagements, and they got a good one here. The, these two bandits, or possibly three, no, definitely two. Not in a good spot. Kingstad could be losing them sometime too, soon, or CPO could be going in just for the base in the back, just trying to go behind the bandits entirely. And that's exactly what they are doing. I mean, oh, they should be able to get nice. the radar tower. And yeah, the radar tower goes down. One of the bandits... Uh, well, some of the glaives managing and to micro away from that. Getting in a decent enough position. But the real prize being this one little convict. And that is not going to go. The bandit's up in time to stop the convict from no, dying. No, 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 no. Or maybe. Ooh. Ooh, that's no, no. actually really close. I mean, at this yes, point, there is... No, there are dead. Well, there's an opening. Yeah, true, but there's... Oh, right, it yeah. may kill the mechs. No, it just stopped. Ah, perfect opportunity to kill this mechs and kill this caretaker, and unfortunately that glaive did not manage to take it. 
So not a bad little rush from CPO, but that did destroy half a dozen glaives, and that's now... Sheesh, that's already 180 metal passed oh, over uh, to King's Dead. In the north, this is a good... Ooh, yeah, and that conjurer great. as well. That conjurer gets Almost spotted. Like the con as well. Yeah. Okay, now the conjurer got lucky, but still, that is... That is a situation where I would not want to be that conjurer. Hmm. I mean, it looks like the armor composition right now is definitely somewhat in Kingstad's favor. I mean, the rockers coming up are potentially a counter, but considering the size of the armies, I'd say Kingstad right now a little bit ahead. What do you think? Um, yes, but look at the metal. Like, Scipio currently seems to have it better. Um, just Although he's accessing, which is not good. He doesn't have any caretakers. Fatal, I think, is accessing quite a lot. Let's see the graphs. Yep. Hmm. Well, that is definitely a bit of a problem. Yeah, we do have that here. So definitely is, as you said, 400 metal excess so far. And that is going to be a bit of a problem as... We, I mean, at this point, it's fine because the numbers are there, but with these bandits up at the top, they are managing to deal a fair amount of damage and get rid of a few metal extractors oh, off nice. CPOs, evening out the metal a little bit. So that is something. Yeah. And actually, sorry, yeah. that's CPO accessing. CPO's at 400. So despite yeah, the metal yeah, advantage yeah. you were talking about, that is still... That did not translate to a production advantage, and now that they don't have that metal advantage either, Kingstad is in a remarkably good position. Um, I believe so. Oh, not able to get a whole lot of damage in though. I mean, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a kite. King's Dad not falling for it. Doesn't want to lose those bandits if they don't have to. Try, I mean, clearly trying to take pot shots if they can. I'm not sure what they're trying to gain from this. They don't have enough bandits to actually take anything down. I'm not really sure what the point of that was, except maybe it's a distraction play, which, in that respect, it seems to have worked reasonably well. CPU's new factory is not well defended um, and he doesn't have the units to guard it so this is a bit worrying I'm not sure why he made it well proxy light vehicle factory if it was if it was a mid-game situation where CPO had the metal extractors up front and had some defenses I could see that being a good place to put it just because you don't have to worry yeah, about the hills but not right. now yeah. oh look at the south you have a nice raid Oh, wow. That is, yeah, on top of the frontal assault. The CPU managed to get some damage, but those glaives got their con, their, got their convict, but at the same time, that's yeah. possibly at the cost of a factory. Possibly at the cost yeah, of the commander, which... too. And factories just became uh, costlier, you know. They're that's now 1,000 right. and not 600. Yeah, we have that as a thing in CPU. Already throwing in the towel. That is oh, my. first game. Yeah, no kidding. I mean... I guess they figured they just dropped 1,000 metal on a factory. That was actually a metal advantage. No, they had no metal advantage. Kingstad was damaging enough that they didn't even have a metal advantage going in. So they were even and didn't get any value out of that. I could see them getting out of there alive, but that would have been a really tough uphill mm -hmm. battle. So, interesting start. Good job, Kingstad. And now we've got... Let's see, what else have we got here? Because... Near and West the boss, I think. Yeah, Near and West the boss, probably the best pair to go to just to double check see how they're doing how the seven minutes of their game have been because that's let's see we have assuming that started seven minutes ago and yeah you know, let's see so near and wesley boss another game that should be relatively even but at the same time it's like i don't know we're gonna have we're gonna have an interesting bit of bit of catch up because that's what always happens that's how it works mm -hmm. seems to be cloakies versus cloakies into no one's surprise oh, of course i mean everything's cloaky in this in this meta but indeed it is cloaky and it looks like again we have actually fairly aggressive star coming out from wesley right now trying to stop an ear from even building yeah. up in the first place and doing a pretty good job of it too all right Already we have like five minutes in, and Wesley has twice the economy of a near. 
managing to push in quite a bit too. Possibly, well, threaten the commander, not get rid of the mine that the Rockos can't get that high, but still able to get in a lot of con... Get rid of most of the conjurers, get rid of a lot of the metal extractors as well, and keep Anir down. Wesley is doing a fine job with this economy, but at the same time, Anir seems to be managing to micro their way into a decent attrition setup. It's just that attrition is not enough to deal with the economy that Anir has set up so far. So I don't see this being an easy fight coming in for Anir. Yeah, this seems very one sided. Anir is entirely contained, he cannot raid. Wesley boss is just expanding nakedly everywhere and brings gunships. This is pretty much over before we even started casting it. <laughs> well, certainly there's strong attempts. The gremlins are in. They're managing to do a bit of damage, but yeah, that lack of metal, I mean, that is everything in 0k is metal, and we saw this entire time during the catch-up that Wesley did everything in their power to stop Anir from even starting to build up, which is what you gotta do, because Anir is one of the stronger players in the game, and Wesley, knowing it, just made sure that Anir could not get set up. Because with Wesley an even economy. Is actually, yeah. Sorry, but Wesley is very, very good. Um, it, Clearly. Giving a fight. Yes, yes. <laughs> Clearly it's, they it's are. Not just, yeah, yeah. It's not just cheese tactics or anything. He's a very aggressive player who manages to, you know, uh, it, it's not easy playing against him, let's say, like this. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, certainly. But at the same time, still, that was, that was quick. <laughs> so I think at this yes. point... I don't know, are, all, are most games done at this point? Because it seems like it, the brackets aren't updated for it, but I think most of I the games so, yes. are pretty well wrapped up, because those would have been the most even ones. Let's see. Oh no, GPR Kira and Philthos are still going at it. Oh hmm. my. I'm surprised to be. Yeah, let's see. So now it's done. Why don't I see it? I don't see. It. Oh, I do see it. Yeah, it looks like. Uh, Walk and Seeker are still going on. Hmm. Oh no, GPR Kieran failed us. No, it's still going. What? All right. Well, I'm. Honestly, kind of curious how GPR Kira is holding on against Fieldthus. And clearly you've already discovered some, somewhat what is going on, because you've already jumped in there. Um, yeah, I don't think he's holding up. I think Feltos is playing with his prey. Oh, okay. That makes sense. That's, that's something Feltos could be doing. That could do. Let's yeah. see. Yeah, starting out. Spider versus Hover. Wait, Kira going for Spider on a map? Like, well, that's a strange choice. Yeah, it doesn't seem like a very experienced player, so... No, but I've seen Sigero pulling out Spiders in very, very weird maps, so... Everything that's is also Sigero, though. Really. Like, you're right. Yeah, of course. These things are possible, but Spider, especially if you don't have a huge amount of experience, is a very difficult factory to make work. Right, right, right. Definitely. So, I'm, I mean, it's working out yeah, right defensively, but yeah, again, we see Fieldtoss already has 100 metal at the 8-minute mark. Yeah, this is this is just Fieldtoss seeing how many daggers they can build more than anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, thank you a lot of redbacks. Fair amount of reclaim coming from Kira, but not enough power to make that work. And now critical mass of daggers. I'm curious, is Fieldtoss just trying to test how many daggers it takes? And no, they're not, I with the scalpels so. coming in. Yeah, yeah, daggers just weren't enough. Oh, wow, though, that's actually... I mean, I guess Fieldhouse just is not... Yeah, Fieldhouse is not microing. They're just... They're raw moving everything in there and hoping for the best. And, I mean, this yeah. is no micro. Still just managing to push in, because why not? Show the power of sheer numbers as the scalpels come in. Because, I mean, it's 120, 130 metal to four. And that... Okay, there we go. We happen to jump in right as it ended. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot more sense. I mean, that's a thing that happens. Like, just in tournaments in general, that is a thing that happens. People at the, at the first round is a little bit up in the air, and then after that, it'll it'll even out. So next match should be a little bit less one-sided, or the next set of matches should be a little bit less one-sided. But anyway, until then, it's gonna let's just go to a quick break because at this, I think all the halfway decent matches are gonna be done. 
No. What the heck? Mm hmm. So, for now, let's go for a bit of a quick break, and mm -hmm. then we'll be back in a couple, couple minutes. Stay tuned. <laughs> 